RootsAction.org is a left-wing group that backed Bernie Sanders, and they even attacked Joe Biden pretty fiercely in the primary. They called his record abysmal. So, you know, this Roots Action Group, I'm not too familiar with them myself, but they seem like they're the real deal. Well, now they're out with a new ad similar to the Settle for Biden ads. Remember, I showed you those the other day. Um, this is effectively the same kind of thing. They're not, I don't think they're affiliated with Settle for Biden, but this is a similar kind of ad. They're releasing an ad that argues for the same position of like settling for Biden. Um, so this one features Noam Chomsky. Let's take a look and then we'll discuss. Another four years of Trump may literally lead us to the stage where the survival of organized human society is deeply imperiled. The most important issue that humans have faced in their history is the impending catastrophic climate disaster. According to a new report, experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. Trump is the worst person in the world on this issue. All of this with the global warming and that, and a lot of it's a hoax, it's a hoax. So we have a choice between trying to find a way to survive or ensuring disaster. That's just the beginning. The traditional left position is you don't vote for, you vote against. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter whether you like Biden or not. That's your personal feelings irrelevant. Nobody cares about that. What they care about is what happens to the world. You have to get rid of Trump, keep pressure on Biden, just as Sanders and Associates have been doing. Politics is activism, not taking five minutes to push a button. Look what's happening in the streets of the country. The greatest social movement that has ever developed, led by Black Lives Matter, take Sunrise Movement, managed to put the Green New Deal on the legislative agenda. This generation is going to decide whether organized human society can survive. And the crucial part of this decision is to get rid of the major barrier to survival happens to be in the White House. Get rid of Trump, and then we have opportunities. So I feel like this even went a step further than the Settle for Biden people, because this ad, it, it says literally like a message to the swing states, and Noam Chomsky was talking there to the swing states. So he's actually not making a proactive argument to get out and vote for Biden in non-swing states. He's saying in the swing states. So that's that's an even more nuanced position than the settle for Biden people who just seem like they were making an argument, settle for Biden no matter where you are. Just go vote for him. Like that was the settle for Biden position. This goes a step further and they're like, I don't care what you do if you're in a safe state. Only if you're in a swing state, please like vote for him there. Um, so it's a little more nuanced. Now... I will say it is frustrating that the only time Chomsky gets quoted seems to be when he's saying vote for a standard Democrat. I would love it if anybody who's part of any group, mainstream media or non or, you know, political activist group, whatever, for the love of God, please quote him when it's not this quote. You know, like all the things he said, he famously said that if the Nuremberg laws were upheld, every post-World War II president would be hanged. He says, you know, the U.S. is the leading terrorist nation. You want to quote him on that? You want to quote him on international law? Like, you want to quote him on uh, what he calls anarcho-syndicalism? Or about how he argues that you have to think of freedom as a tendency in human beings, so we're always kind of striving for more and more freedom, and that eventually this will make its way to not just the political realm, but also the economic realm. And it gets, gets into the idea of democratizing the workplace. They'd never quote him on those things, because, you know, those things 
too radical for mainstream society, or so they think. But they love trotting out the vote for the standard Democrat argument. So that is a little frustrating that Chomsky never really gets his due in terms of um, like his actual positions. Um, but having said that, listen, again, just like I said in the Settle for Biden segment that we did, I'm not mad at these people. I'm not mad at them at all. Because if you are going to make the argument for Joe Biden, all we ask is that you be honest. That's all the left asks. That's it. Just be honest. Like Nina Turner said, uh, voting for Joe Biden is, e is like eating half a plate of shit. Now, Trump could be the whole plate of shit, but at least be honest with me and tell me that Joe Biden is a half a plate of shit. Don't tell me he's a delicious fudge brownie, because he's not. So, all we ask is for honesty. There's one thing I will take issue with in that ad, though, and... It's when Chomsky says we have to keep pressure on Biden as Sanders and his associates are doing. See there, I just flat disagree with Chomsky because Bernie is not doing that. Some of his people are like there's a lot of his delegates that basically staged a coup on Medicare for all. And they're like, we're not going to support the DNC platform if if you don't have Medicare for all in it. So they're abiding by their values and pushing as hard as they can. And I respect every single one of them that did that. They're my heroes. What Bernie has done recently, don't tell me he's fighting. He's not. He's bending the knee. Now, would I have an issue with Bernie bending the knee in certain circumstances? No. But we're not in those circumstances. So as I've explained to everybody before, he should have gotten more out of Biden. If Bernie met with Biden before he dropped out and he said, listen, man, I will drop out and I will back you as strongly as I possibly can. If, if, here's a list of 10 executive orders. I need you to do these executive orders, promise to do them within the first 100 days. So then you would have put Biden in a position. Biden wants to win. And they're at least doing the fake outreach to the left these days. If Bernie gave him a real ultimatum, support these or don't, if you support them, I'll help you. If you don't, I'm just going to walk away. I think he would have supported them, or at the very least, he would have picked, said, I'll do five of the ten. Something. Something. And Bernie could add amazing executive orders that, you know, really brought us real change that we need desperately. Instead of getting tangibles, that would have been tangible. These executive orders in the first hundred days, they could have made a deal. He didn't get any tangibles. And that's my problem with Bernie today. Is that you can't just pledge to them and then turn around and ask them for stuff. This is what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez did too. I'm going to vote for Biden. And then a couple weeks later, hey, he wouldn't do a meeting with me. You already pledged your support. Why would he meet with you? You have, they have no leverage. Your leverage would be, uh, listen, I'll support you and I'll try to get all my people to support you, but here are my terms. They don't give them any terms. They're just like, oh, we can kind of vaguely prod them left. Here, let's placate them with this freaking unity commission where, by the way, they disregarded most of our important, most important ideas on that. So my point is, don't let's not pretend like Bernie got everything out of Biden that he could have because he didn't. And I have nothing but love and respect and adoration for Bernie Sanders. But you have to call a spade a spade. He had the ability to get a lot more out of Joe Biden, and he didn't. So don't tell me, oh, we got to keep pressure on Biden as Sanders and associates are doing. No, some of his associates are doing it. Others aren't, and he's definitely not. He likes Biden a lot more than he liked Hillary Clinton. And so he's willing to overlook the flaws in Biden even more. And that's a problem. And that is ultimately, you know controlling the Overton window and the spectrum of debate that's allowed. And my job and your job as people who are really on the left and care about these issues, we don't have to play nice as much as Bernie Sanders did. We can be more demanding and more aggressive. Now, we're all individuals, so maybe your line is different from where my line is and somebody else's line is different from where my line and your line is. We all have our lines. But we need to push more aggressively. And... um I guess my point is, I'm not mad at anybody who is arguing for settle for Biden or is making these kinds of arguments of like, hey man, listen, I know he sucks, but here's why I'm doing it. I get it, man. They brought up a great issue of climate change. There's no way Biden would be as bad on climate change compared to Trump. He just wouldn't. He'd be a lot better. That's a fact. So if you want to argue for him as such, I have no problem with that whatsoever. All I ask is that you be honest. And then the second part to that is, 
All I ask is that if you're on the left and you believe in these issues, stop settling for half a loaf and keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Because unfortunately, so often, people either lie when they're trying to push Biden on you, or they will flat out just stop pushing and just be like, what am I going to do? That's the end of it. No, it can never be, what am I going to do? It's got to be, you have to be demanding because that's the only way we get change is when people stop taking bullshit and really fight for what they believe in and force those in power to bend their will. You don't bend to them, they bend to you. That's the rule. We can have the strategic conversations. We can talk about, you know, whether or not it is or isn't okay to vote for various actors. But you have to push as hard as you can for as long as you can to really get change or else we'll never get it and you'll keep being placated and we'll keep getting no change.